how did I miss something so simple? And it's something that I've been staring at for such a long time, and yet I still missed it. All right, before I tell you what I missed, I thought this might be a great opportunity to be able to um, kind of do some, some diagnosing. So in my last job, I worked for a company that required me to get a lot of different certifications for the different types of software that we worked on. And one of them was a phone system, a computer-based phone system for call centers. So we had to go to classes and, and do a lot of training. And I mean, the book for this thing was bigger than a Coke can uh, in, in height. So you're talking, you know, probably five, six inches thick of pages of things that you had to learn. And so we went through this, you know, I don't even remember if it was a week long, two weeks long training. And at the end of the training, you had to take a, a written test, but then they also had a practical test. And in that practical test, you had to at first build out a system to their specifications, program it, get the phones all working and everything. And then you had to leave the room. And the instructors would go through and intentionally break something about your system. And then you had to come back in. And the final part of your test was to diagnose and correct whatever the problem was. And it could be something as simple as, you know, a mistyped parameter. Or I know sometimes they walked around and they just barely unplugged one of the network jacks into the back of the computer. So it looked good, everything looked connected, but it was broken. And, you know, in noticing this problem that I had, I thought, well, this would be a great uh, little training opportunity, I guess, a uh, troubleshooting opportunity. It's not gonna be long, but it'll be just interesting to see what do you notice? Do you notice the problem? So, so let me take a look. Let me show you what, uh, what we're working with here. All right. Sit down here. So over my shoulder here, you can see, you know, the basic wiring that we've had set up for uh, months now on, on my solar uh, system. And for the longest time, you know, until I had to look at making a few updates while the inverters were gone, um, I really hadn't noticed this problem at all because everything worked, but it wasn't working properly, I guess I should say. Um, nothing, nothing to do with the inverters. This is 100% my incorrect wiring. And it actually came to light more specifically in one of the videos that I did regarding having the grid charge the batteries. No, what was it? The video regarding having the grid power the inverter load while in grid bypass. Because remember, I had that, that 64 watt phantom load which I could only ascribe to the inverters when in grid bypass. Now, some people made the comment thinking that it had to do with, uh, you know, the, the buck converter, the smart shot, or the charge controller. And I told them no, because I had actually unplugged all that stuff and still had the 64 watt load. And that is completely accurate. There was still that draw when all those things were disconnected. But only until, you know, the past couple of days did I actually notice that uh, 
I wasn't accurately recording the data properly in Solar Assistant. And again, it's nothing to do with Solar Assistant either. It's all because of my improper wiring. So for, for a, a few seconds, uh, I want to try and give you guys a close-up view of the wiring, and I want you to see if you can diagnose what the problem is before I tell you what it is. You know, where, where's the fun in me just saying, hey, I have a problem, here's what it is. Well, let's use this as a, a learning experience. I mean, I've wired up this kind of stuff for a long time, and a long time is relative compared to some people, but, you know, year and a half I've been messing around with wiring regarding solar systems and you know 12 volt 48 volt and you know I still screw up <laughs> um, and so it, this honestly could happen to anybody and so let's just take this time to you know learn how to diagnose some some problems all right, so this, I'm going to give you somewhat of a close-up view of all the wiring here. So you can see up top the two Class T fuses, my red positive bus bar. Uh, we've got the buck converter smart shunt, a negative bus bar. And, you know, you can ignore the um, wires that are just kind of dangling out here because this was just my temporary testing. And then over here, we've got my battery disconnects. So if I if I zoom out just a little bit without getting stabbed in the back by this camera mount, if you take a second to follow some of these leads and look at all the wiring for the different parts, do you notice anything done incorrectly? And I'll, I'll, I will say this, if you're not familiar with one of the pieces of equipment that I'm using, it might not seem apparent as to what the problem is. I know that's very vague. All right, so here's what the problem is. And ultimately it has to do with data collection on power usage and power generation. Again, I know that's vague, but it all has to do with this piece right here. My smart shunt. My smart shunt is what's used to record and send information to Solar Assistant on my Raspberry Pi to tell me how much power is coming in and out. And it's not set up properly for every piece of equipment that I have. For the inverters, for everything tied to the inverters, works great. This smart shunt is designed that you hook up your battery to one side and you hook up all your loads to the other side and it calculates what comes in to the battery and what goes out of the battery. But that only works if you put all your loads on one side. If you put a load on the battery side, it's not getting recorded. And that's what I did. That's the mistake that I made. So if you look here, my negative bus bar, I have a lead here. I also have a lead here. These are on the battery side of the smart shunt. These two leads should be on this side of the smart shunt in order to properly track the load. So my solar assistant has not been recording usage for my buck converter and my Raspberry Pi because the power has been drawn from before the smart shunt. And the same thing with this charge controller that I've been using in testing. It's been hooked up before the smart shunt. So power is getting added and removed before the smart shunt, so it's not being able to track any of that. I can't believe I missed that. And to be honest, originally I had it all set up right until I added this buck converter. And that's when I that's when it was wrong. 
because uh, I originally, and I remember this, I was going to use this bus bar as a, as a battery connection bus bar only. And had I done that, everything would have been fine. Had I had another bus bar on the opposite side, everything would have been perfectly fine. So in all these months that I've been running, I haven't had an accurate, it's been close, but I haven't had a complete accurate picture of power draw because this little thing here and this thing here have not been included in that power draw. And it just goes to show that little things, you can miss little things. And I mean, I've been staring at this, all this wiring for so long, and I completely missed it. So I hope it helps to know that, you know, if you mess something up, trust me, you're not alone. If you miss something, you're not alone. And when you've got a problem, take a step back and start looking at its base pieces of what's involved in your problem and just start tracking things down. Follow the flow. Is everything working the way it's supposed to for piece A, for piece B, for piece C? And had I looked at this closely, and I mean, you can read it on the side here, two battery minus, and then underneath here, I believe it says two system load. And yet, oh, I saw a bus bar and I just connected to it. So, have fun with your systems. You're going to make mistakes. It's it's the nature of the, the beast of DIY. But learn from them. And so I'm going to go through and I'm probably just going to try and swap this whole thing around and, and rework it a little bit. So it might seem like something trivial, trivial to you. Uh, and, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it is. But it's still something that I set up incorrectly and I should have known better. And it was probably due to the fact that I was trying to move way too quickly and I was not taking my time. So if you haven't learned anything from this entire video, just learn this one thing. Take your time. When you rush things, when you try to quickly slap things together, you're going to screw up. I've done it time and time again, and it's coming back to bite me. I mean, <laughs> you want a perfect example of a screw up that I did? When I was working on getting my battery bank initially set up, I wasn't even thinking. I laid all my batteries out on the rack, I started laying out my bus bars, and I laid out a positive to a negative to a positive to a negative on two cells, which creates a dead short, which creates tons of sparks. And my hand just happened to instinctively fling up and smack one of the bus bars off before it welded itself and completely destroyed the cells. All because I was moving too fast and not paying attention. Slow down, take your time. Trust me, you're going to have a whole lot less issues if you do that. All right, I'm going to let y'all go. Y'all stay safe, stay warm, <laughs> and we'll catch up with you later.